Hi, I'm Jim, and Bolt Quest is a series where I answer your questions from the Bolt Discord. The first question comes from Skylight Gaming, who asks, Has anyone got an idea of how to get the transform of an object? I'm trying to make a point where the player gets teleported. Great question, Skylight. I'm going to talk about three different ways to move objects in unity with Bolt. This is the final effect that we're going for if you want to follow along and download the package below, but you could use any project that you're working on. So I just have a flat white material on all these little buildings from Kyoto, and I made prefabs of the sun and the moon, and you can see that I have um, lights childed to each of those objects. And what I want to do is have the sun start out below the horizon and then shoot up into the sky. So first, Rather than script this on the uh, sun object, I'm going to do it a different way. So right click and do create empty. And then let's call this game object uh, sky controller because we're going to control the sky. And I already have Bolt installed, so I'm going to go to add component and add a flow machine. Then I'll click new to make a new macro and I'll save this as sky controller. And I'll give you my completed graph. Uh, it will be Sky Controller Bolt Quest Tutorial. All right, I'll save that. Okay, so then I have the graphs here. In order for the Sky Controller to access the sun and the moon, we'll need to have uh, variables that reference to those game objects. And since I don't have the variables window here, I'm going to go up to Window and get Graph Inspector and variables. And then I'll just dock those in the corner. So there's different variable choices, graph variables, which are just for this graph, like internal circuitry, object variables, if you add multiple graphs on this object wanting to know about the same things, and then scene variables, for example, like whether it's day or night is maybe something a lot of objects would want to know about. Object variables are visible in the inspector on the game object, and that's useful for movement scripts because you can drag any game object you want into that variable slot and be able to move it. So I'm going to start with making two variables, one for the sun, and I'll make it of type game object. And then I'll make another one, uh, moon, and also make that of type game object. And then I'll drag the sun and the moon game objects into both of those slots. The first way we'll do this is with a node called set position. So right click and type set position. And the one that we want is transform set position. Transform is referring to the transform component on the game object. So you can see that word transform is right there. Now a word like transform might make you think of a transformation like a werewolf. And if I threw you a banana, you wouldn't say that the banana transformed to you. But our objects are really just a bunch of data. And every time we scale something or rotate or move something, that original set of data is being transformed into a new set of data based on the directions we're giving it. So Unity and other programs have named this component for the mathematical stuff it's doing. And I've included a link below to a Khan Academy video on transformation and mathematics. OK, so I'll connect up start. And then I'll grab the sun variable which automatically makes a get variable unit. And we want to connect that up to where it says self, because self is the sky controller. And we don't want to move the sky controller. We want to move the sun object. I'll put the sun below the horizon. And I can see that it's at 50 on the Z. So for the set position, I'll put it at 25 where it was at. And uh, then I need to put 50 on the Z. So it stays uh, at the same point on that Z axis. All right, I'll press play and you can see this work. So it automatically switches to the game view. And since this is happening immediately on start, we don't even get a chance to see the sun at the horizon. But if you look, you can see that it is at 25 and 50. Transform set position is doing something automatically for us. Um, Skylight Gaming's question was about getting the transform from a game object. So let me right click here and type get game object, get transform. In programming, this is what you need to do. So I'll connect up the game object. We get the transform from the game object, and then we set the position on the transform. So if I press play, you can see that this also works. But we don't need to do it because transform set position is getting the transform from the game object for us. 
So I'm going to show you quickly a scenario where you do need to get the transform from a game object. So on keyboard input, I'm going to once again set position, transform, set position, and then I'll connect that up. And I'll put uh, the sun in the thing we want to move, and then the moon is where we want to move the sun to. Let's see if this works. Okay, you can see that we get an error message here. Cannot convert Unity Engine game object to Unity Engine Vector 3. Okay, so I'll stop the game and right click on the connection to sever it. And then we're going to drag out the connection and let go and type transform get position and get the transform get position unit. Now check out the slight difference between the icons. These two icons match their vector three icons, and that is a transform icon, which matches the transform icon right there. To get the moon's position, we have to go into the moon's transform. Then we can get that vector three and set the sun to it. Rather than use start, let's use that on uh, keyboard input. So I'll right click and then just type on key. And what we'll do is set it so that we can uh, change the position of the sun up or down. So up arrow will send the sun up and then down arrow will send the sun down. So I'll just duplicate everything with control D. And on the duplicated graph, uh, Let's change it so that it the sun goes to zero and that that happens on the down arrow. Okay, I'll press play. And you can see that because I'm in the scene view, it actually moved the scene view forward. I'm gonna click on the game view and now our arrows will work. Up, down, up, down. All right. We can use set position for teleportation or we can use it to move things gradually. I'll make some space here, and then let's get an add unit, uh, add unit for vector three. And then we're also going to need to get the current position of the sun. I'll right click, add unit, and type get position, transform get position. And then I'll get the variable to the sun game object. That's where we're getting the transform and the position from. So we're getting the position of the sun, and then we're going to add to it on the y-axis. Um, and we'll just add one. And then um, we need to put that into the set position. Okay, so let's try this out. Click here. Up, 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 up. And there is the sun slowly appearing. We can do this on a uh, keyboard input, or we can do it on update. And I'm going to speed through that real quick uh, so I don't go on for like 30 minutes. So I'll bring back the update unit, and we'll add a small amount to the Y. Maybe 0 0.01 is too small. I'll do 0 0.1. And there's the sun rising. Now there's nothing stopping the sun, so it's just going to keep rising and rising, and we'll all die in the cold void of space. Uh, so I'm going to stop the game before that happens. Okay, and to just review the graph a little bit, what we're doing is we're getting the position of the sun uh, every frame, and we're adding a small amount to it. And then with that new vector 3, we set the sun to that position so that the next frame, the sun is at the new position, which we get and add to again and set again. And we keep doing that, getting, adding, and setting over and over. Now, if this feels like a lot of units to just move something up, I totally agree with you. Let's try another way of doing this. So right click and type translate. And we have a couple different translate units. Let's just use the one without the relative to, just the X, Y, and Z. So again, we want our, uh, let's do the moon this time. So I'll bring the moon out and I'm gonna disable the sun with my uh, shortcut to disable things, um, it's the same as doing that. And I use the tilde key uh, for the shortcut for that. It's really fast. So I'll enable the moon. And uh, let's set the moon to zero. Okay, so let's try translate. So um, we're gonna translate the moon two meters on the Y on keyboard input. And what you'll immediately notice about the moon is that it moves diagonally. Translate by default works on the local orientation rather than the global. So you can see that if you press the X key. And if you press the X key again, it goes back to global. So I thought it looked good rotated on the Z axis a little bit. I'll make that zero 
And now since it isn't rotated, it moves straight up. Wherever I rotate the moon, it will always move up on that local Y axis. But what I want to do is move it up even though the object is rotated. So I'm going to get translate relative to. So with the relative to, we can change it to be relative to the world rather than relative to itself. That way it'll just move the object up in the global Y no matter how it's rotated. And of course we can use update instead. So I'll move it up a little bit every frame. So we don't need to set the position. Uh, translation does that automatically for us. Now, since we're using update, we're moving this point one every frame and our frame rate fluctuates a lot. So in order to get the movement to be more consistent, let's get a per second node and that first one. And this way we can specify how far we want the sun to move every second, regardless of how fast or slow our frames per second is. So I'll make it be five. And if you've heard of time, delta time before, uh, that's what's going on under the hood. You can see that that number changes there, but the movement is consistent. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna cut in with a completed graph on how to set something up to where it stops uh, when the object is getting less than a, a certain distance from uh, a target. So you can see we have a vector three distance node and the distance is getting less and less and less. And then when it gets less than one, the branch will flip to true and nothing happens after true. So the branch and the less than or equal to is saying, are we there yet? No, translate. Are we there yet? No, translate. Are we there yet? Oh, we're there. Okay, we're there. Don't translate anymore. True, nothing happens. Now there's a, a cleaner way to do all this. So I'm going to delete all these units and then go to the asset store. I'll press shift and space to full screen the window and then search for do tween. There's a pro version of do tween and a free version. We're going to use the free version. I've already imported it, but I'll import it again. And you need to click uh, set up do tween. And then after this compilation process, click apply. Then we need to tell Bolt about this DoTween package so that Bolt can generate the unit. So go to Tools, Bolt, and Setup Wizard, and then click Next. I'm using Human Naming. Assemblies are libraries of code that we can use. So scroll to the bottom, and there there's a little plus sign. You can click it and type DoTween, and then also add DoTween Editor. And then next, types uh, or data types. So we've already used uh, data type vector three, for example. Uh, so at the bottom, add all of these uh, DoTween related data types. We won't be using all of them, but if you check the DoTween manual, these cover most of what I think you'd wanna do. Uh, and in the next video, we'll be using tween parameters. Then click generate when you've added all those. I'll uh, control D duplicate the on keyboard input and change the key to the up arrow. And then uh, once that's generated, all you need to do is type do move. And um, this is uh, do tween stuff. So let's do 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 move Y. All right, so uh, I'm gonna connect that up. It's uh, referencing itself, which we don't want. Let's do, um, let's go back to using the sun. So I'll plug the sun in because that's what we want to do move. And the end value is the Y. So let's make it 25. And then the duration, let's do one second. And then rather than the set position and sun here, um, I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to do a do move on the, uh, so the duration one again, and then the end value will be, let's send it below the horizon to negative 25. I'll press play. All right, let's try it. Up, down, cool. So I'm going to time lapse this. Uh, for the moon, I'll do the flip of what we're doing to the sun the moon will go 
negative 25 when the sun is rising, and then when the sun is descending, the moon will go up 25. Now, for the final cartoon effect, uh, I'm also changing the skybox, and the animation has a little bit of personality to it, and I'm going to cover that in the next video. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't yet, join the community on the Bolt Discord and let us know your quest.